Good evening and welcome to our third night of our virtual mini Holy Week revival. I pray that God has been using these few little snippets, these few little moments to kind of gather you and I and to, to prep us for what he's up to as we look forward to the release of his resurrection power that we celebrate on Resurrection Sunday. But it's all of the stuff that happens all the way to the cross that leads then to resurrection that, that we're looking at this week. And so I pray that you've been able to follow along with us and that God has been speaking to your heart and speaking to your mind and prepping you for that release in your life. Uh, as we get into it on tonight, would you bow with me in prayer and we ask the presence of God with us in these next few moments. Father, we love you, we bless you, we thank you, we magnify you, we thank you for this was the day that you made and so we have chosen to rejoice and be made glad in it. We thank you, oh God, that you have allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. Thank you for your goodness and your grace to us even in these moments. And so now, God, for the next few minutes, will you allow your Holy Spirit to speak? Would you anoint me afresh and use me for your glory? Let people hear not my words, but hear your voice as you speak to us on tonight through your word. Do it to the end that we'll be encouraged, that we'll be prepared, that we will have understanding, that we'll be armed and dangerous to be about our Father's kingdom business in these days and in the days to come. Do it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, listen, uh, I'm excited about what's been going on. I pray that you've been tracking along with us. Uh, now, tonight, we want to look at uh, uh, one of the episodes in that last week of the life of Jesus. And um, it's kind of interesting that when you look at it, in each one of these instances, we're looking at things that every one of the four gospel writers wrote about. Uh, sometimes they chose different stuff to emphasize, but in each of these that we're talking about this week, every one of the gospel writers spoke on them. And that's both good and in my case tonight, it's bad because I want to take all of these four different perspectives of this one story and try to piece them together. And so uh, I'm going to ask you to follow along with me. I'm going to try to make sure that I put out there where the scripture references are so that you don't take my word for them, but you can follow up and study the word of God for yourself. But I want to start with um, what I want to talk about tonight is not just the Last Supper, because I kind of dealt with that on Sunday, but I want to look at that scene leading up to the Last Supper because I believe there's something uh, amazing that God wants to speak to us on tonight. And so in Mark's gospel, in Mark chapter 14, Mark chapter 14 at verse 12, I want you to see that. Uh, this is from the uh, New Living Translation. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it's from the New King James Translation. Uh, watch what the Bible says. Mark 14 verse 12, on the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go to prepare the Passover meal for you? Uh, that's actually the New Living Translation now that I'm looking at it, but, but notice what happens. that They've come into the city in the triumphal entry. There's been all of this controversy. Jesus has gone into the temple. He's caused all kinds of problems there. He's been teaching. He's been running around. Crowds are showing up. All of, the, all of these Jew, Jewish people and Jewish proselytes, uh, those who have been converting to Judaism, are all in the city as Passover is beginning, beginning to take place. Uh, the crowd is swelling. All of this stuff is going on. All of the, the, these rushings and happenings are, are, are going on around them. And the disciples think that Jesus is so busy and so distracted from all the stuff that's going on that preparing for the Passover is about to sneak up on Jesus and he may forget the, the, the stuff necessary for this important celebration, the Seder celebration that the Jewish people practice even to this day. So they asked him, uh, where do you want to go to prep for this Passover meal. Well, all of this stuff is happening. We know, we know you're caught up with what's going on. We know you haven't thought about this. So we're gonna help you out. Where do you want us to, to make reservations for this? Now, the interesting thing is in Jewish culture, uh, anybody who has a home can open up their home to anybody else 
who wants to participate in the Passover. So finding a place to go wasn't going to be hard, but there are some steps. There were some things that had to be bought. There were some preparations that had to be made. And so it's a process. And Jesus is so busy going hither and yon and healing people and teaching and, and, and ticking off uh, chief priests and, and scribes. So they, they think Jesus isn't thinking about this. Uh, but Jesus would actually tell them later in Luke 22 and 15, Jesus would say at the Passover supper, he would say, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins, which clues us into the fact that Jesus had been thinking about this in spite of everything else that was going on, in spite of the cross that was in front of him, he had been thinking about spending that Passover time with his disciples. He not only wanted to do it, he was looking forward to spending time commemorating and celebrating Passover with his disciples. So much so that as we piece together the details of the story, Jesus apparently had already done some planning and arranging ahead of time on his own before they even asked the question. Well, Pastor, what makes you say that? Well, if you look at Mark chapter 14, verse 13, the Bible says that Jesus sends two of them into Jerusalem. Later on, we're going to find out uh, from Luke's gospel that it was Peter and John. He sends these two and he gives them instructions. In Matthew 26 and 18, they're told, you will see a certain man. That means that, that this was somebody that Jesus already knew who this guy was. Well, how were they going to know? When in Luke chapter 21, verses 10 and 11, Jesus said, it's going to be an unusual thing that you'll see about this certain man, that he'll be carrying a pitcher of water. Normally, remember John chapter 4, women were the one who went to the wells and got the water. Here, Jesus had already talked to a certain person, and this certain person would be a male carrying a pitcher of water. And Jesus said, he will meet you, so follow him. And at the house that guy enters, don't talk to the man carrying the pitcher, talk to the owner of the house. So apparently, God's, Jesus has already set up at least two different levels of what's about to happen. And then in Matthew 26 and 18, we find out that the message that these two, Peter and John, were supposed to share with a certain person was that the teacher says, my time has come. And so they're going to ask him in Mark's gospel, in Matthew's gospel, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He asked that there's a certain man. He's going to go follow him to the house. When you get to the house, talk to the owner. Tell the owner, the teacher, and this guy would apparently know who the teacher is. He's asking you, where's the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? Mark 14 he picks up the story. Mark 14 verses 15 and 16. Jesus said, this guy, the owner, will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. So the two disciples went into the city and found everything. Listen, just as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover meal there. Watch this. They don't think Jesus is thinking about it. Jesus already has a plan. He already knows the guy to talk to. He already knows what to tell the guy. The guy already knows how to respond. When they get there, the room is already set up. Now, get out of your head the setup from the, the, the Last Supper painting. Okay, this was a completely different setup from that. Uh, in Luke 22, verse 8, we find out that Jesus sends Peter and John ahead and tells them, go and prepare the Passover meal. Go through all of this stuff. Watch this so we can eat it together. Watch this. Here's what I want you to see. That Jesus had planned ahead and Jesus had prearranged to get his disciples alone in a house where he could spend time with them. Somebody's already seen where I'm trying to go. <laughs> Notice this. Whatever was happening, however busy it was, Jesus had pre-planned and pre-arranged 
to get his disciples in a house, in a room where it would just be them and Jesus. And Jesus, watch this. If you miss this, you miss everything I'm saying. Jesus was looking forward to spending time with the ones in the house. <laughs> and as you, as you keep reading, as you check out John's gospel, you find out that everything that happens in those moments in that house, uh, from John chapter 13 all the way through John chapter 16, there's these teachings and these nuggets that Jesus dropped on them while they were in the house with him. In John 13 and 35, uh, Jesus is going to make the statement, By this will all men know that you're my disciples, by the love you have for one another. It's something Jesus told them in the house that he arranged to put them in. In John 14 and 2, he tells them the, the thing that we hear at almost every funeral. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He told them that in the house he had prepared to get them in. He says in John 14 and 16, he promises the person of the Holy Spirit. He said, I will send you another helper like me talking about the Holy Spirit. That's something he told them in the house. In John 15 and 1, he gives the great statement, I am the vine and you are the branches. Abide in me and my word abide in you. Ask what you will and it shall be done for you. He says in John 15 and 13, he drops this nugget, greater love has no man than this, that a man lays down his life for his friends. He, he, he prepares them to understand what he's going to do for them through the, his substitutionary atonement sacrifice on the cross because he loves them. He, he says this in John 16 and 13. He said that I'll send you the spirit of truth who will lead you and guide you into all truth. I'm not going to leave you by yourself, but what's going to happen on the other side of this meeting in the house, you're going to have somebody who's going to help you through it. He drops that nugget in the house. In John 16 and 33, he, he makes this statement. He says that in me, you will have peace. In this world, you're going to have tribulations. You're going to have trouble. You're going to have coronaviruses. But then he says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Isn't it amazing? All the stuff Jesus wanted to say to them, all the stuff he downloaded into them because he had prearranged to get them there in that house. While they thought stuff was chaotic, they didn't see Jesus had been setting this whole thing up. Jesus had pre Jesus prearranges the events of our lives. Listen, we might have a, a leadership in this country that acts like they don't know how to handle this problem. This problem didn't catch Jesus by surprise. It, it matter of fact, somebody say it was a setup. It was a setup to get me and you in the house so he could speak some things to us. There's some stuff. He wants to say, he wants this time in your life. And one thing I've learned in the few years that I've been following Jesus, and hear me on this, God will never do great things in your life without first slowing you down enough to get you ready for what he's getting ready for you. And I don't know who this is for, and I don't know what this is about, but Jesus has set up this time. He wants this time with you. He slowed you down on purpose. He got you in the house on purpose because there's some nuggets he's ready to download because of what he knows is next and on the other side. And so listen, uh, Jesus had decided to make the most of his time with them in the house. And if Jesus is making the most of that time, I pray that we do too. Listen, can I pray for you? Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for your foresight. I thank you that you love us before we even knew what was going on. Thank you for what you're doing, what you're trying to say, the rest you're trying to give, the, the restlessness you're trying to stir up in us because you've got great things going on the other side. God, I pray that you would help us in these moments leading up to Resurrection Sunday, where you want to release some power through our lives, I pray, Lord God, that we would maximize and make the most of this time that you have set up, that you have prearranged, that this is the time that you have set. 
And so, Lord, we pray that we would be open, our ears attentive and our spirits open to receive all that you want to say and download in our lives. And God, now we pray, we lift up every family, every person who's struggling during this time, whether it's through an economic need, whether it's a health need, whether it's a being alone need, whether it's lack of social connection need. I pray right now that you would meet us all at the point of our need. I pray for the resident power of the Holy Spirit to well up on the inside and to touch and heal and deliver and encourage and strengthen and do the things that we need, not because of us, but because of the purpose for which you called us to. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done right here on earth, right here in our lives, right in our families as it already is in heaven. Lord, we thank you that you're completely in control of this time. Nothing has caught you by surprise. And so we look forward to what you're doing. We thank you that you're able to cover us. You're able to keep us. You're able to heal us. You're able to rebuke even pestilence and disease. And so we pray that you would do that for us now, not by our cases, but by the shed blood of Jesus on the cross. We thank you. We bless you. We magnify you. And we praise your great name, for there's nobody like you. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Listen, thank you so much for spending this time. I pray that the Lord has spoken to you and to me. May we make the most of this time and watch God do what only God can do. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same channel. We look forward to what God is going to say next in your life and in my life, this Holy Week Revival. I love you and there's nothing that you can do about it.